Israel is facing widespread condemnation from its international allies this morning, including from Canada, following that deadly Israeli airstrike that killed seven aid workers in Gaza. The victims were working with World Central Kitchen. That's the charity that supplies 60 percent of non-governmental aid to Gaza. It's founded by Chef Jose Andres and that man, Jacob Flickinger, 33 years old, a dual Canadian-U.S. citizen. He was one of the seven killed part of that relief team. Last hour, we heard from Melanie Jolie, Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs, echoing the calls from the U.S. and the U.K. for a thorough and transparent and independent investigation. So, unfortunately, a Canadian uh, was uh, killed in the IDF strike that um, um, targeted uh, humanitarian uh, workers from World Kitchen. My deepest condolences to uh, their loved ones and, and family members. Uh, we call for a full investigation. We want to make sure that Israel uh, goes, looks directly into this issue. I've reached out last night to Israel Katz, my uh, Israeli counterpart on this very issue. Israel needs to respect international humanitarian law, and we will make sure that that is the case. Thank you. Now, that is Melanie Jolie, who is at the NATO foreign minister's meeting, and we're going to bring you further coverage from that. Anna Cunningham is in our London bureau with more on the aftermath and the fallout. We're getting an added response this morning from the United Kingdom. Anna, what is happening there in the UK today? Yeah, morning, Heather. I think it's very clear that what we're seeing is mounting pressure on the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to follow up, really, on the strong words he said yesterday, but this time with action. There was a real sense yesterday of true anger within the British government when it was confirmed that amongst those seven aid workers were three British nationals. John Chapman, James Henderson and James Kirby. And we now know that they were all former British servicemen. They have been working as uh, part of the security team for World Central Kitchen. But that push today to take more action and uh, looking towards the possibility that Britain could stop its supply of weapons to Israel. And this call most notably coming from Lord Peter Ricketts. Now, the reason that he's significant, Heather, is because he is a former government national security adviser and permanent secretary to the UK's Foreign Office. This is what he told the BBC this morning. Sometimes in conflict, you get a moment where there's such global outrage that it crystallises a sense that things can't go on like this. A country... Uh, that gets arms from the UK uh, has to comply with international humanitarian law. That's a condition of the arms export license. So, honestly, I think the time has come to send that signal. It so that was uh, Lord Peter Ricketts. But this actually follows, Heather, on from last month. The Foreign Secretary himself, Lord David Cameron, he had said that a judgment would be made on whether Israel had upheld its international commitments. And if it was found it hadn't, then that would be a breach of the arms export licence. So for now, I think the takeaway and what we're looking at is that the British government have not ruled out this move, Heather. World Central Kitchen, Anna, and we know another charity, at least another charity, have halted their operations in Gaza in response to the airstrikes. Of course, aid, the aid that they have been delivering is so desperately needed. What's being done to fill that void now? Well, I mean, if you look back a week, we were talking about those ships setting sail from Larnaca in Cyprus, heading to Gaza, stocked with those urgent aid supplies. Yesterday, we heard that they'd now turned back. This issue of how to deliver and distribute aid, I think, really has become a focus for many nations. They want answers. And as you said, we know that World Central Kitchen, that other agency, Anera, who were providing some two million meals a week to people in Gaza, they've now stopped their operations. Israel has barred UNRWA. But Israel's chief of staff of the IDF has today said that he's visited a new humanitarian command center established today to improve the way they coordinate aid distribution in Gaza. So it would seem, Heather, at the moment, as far as we know, Israel is saying it's dealing with the distribution of aid on the ground in Gaza. But it's something which is very difficult for us to verify, given that no foreign journalists are permitted to enter Gaza. Anna, thank you very much.